Bumps and bruises, scratches and scrapes, some of the ingredients that a good life makes. But sorrows become success. And as we aim for the top, we will pause if we must, but we will never stop. Welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. Hello there and welcome to Simso Sessions, the safe space to share your stories. Tonight, we are delving deeper with entrepreneur, broadcaster, social media star, new mom, and relatively new believer in herself, Carrie Ann Chanike Collins. You see her now after she's weathered several storms, and now sometimes even she can't believe she's sailing on such calm seas and watching dreams she never thought would take flight. So she's here and we welcome her. Hi. Hello there. Hi. Thank you for, uh, thanks for coming. <laughs> yes, I'm so happy to be here. I haven't asked you like 15 times. 16. <laughs> you finally said yes, you. and I'm happy. But I'm as happy you to be said here. before, the time is right when the time is right. Yes. Um, and the time is right now because, just high level, why does it feel like this is the right time? I feel like I've maybe accomplished a little bit more. I'm a little bit more comfortable sharing my story. Mm -hmm. And who better to share it with? Then you. <laughs> I love her. I love her. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Uh, so we look at, you know, and you kind of come into yourself because, as I said before in the opening, and a lot of people don't know, you were plagued and have been plagued growing up, going through high school, going through college. Yes. Even when you started your social media journey, yes. you never felt like you were enough. No. Area. No. What I was didn't. that about? You know, the crazy thing is people, they're, so, they're attracted to something. It's my vibe. It's my energy. And I don't, I wouldn't say like play it. I would put it more as like I was more worried about letting people down because the expectations of me were so high. And I think many believed in me more than I secretly believed in myself sometimes. Mm -hmm. I would say that, but it, it worked. And that self-doubt, that lack of, whether it was a little or a lot, self-belief, do you know when that would have started? I think the more I realize that there's so much more energy and just so much more thoughts I have to put into things. And maybe, I think it started when I started hearing no. When I started hearing no, when I would start applying for jobs mm. um, during my college career mm -hmm. and you know trying to get a job and trying to do everything by the books as they say that you should you know you make your resume you tweak it like this for each job and then you you know you go out and reach out to companies and people that you want to speak to that's in the field that you're trying to get in you do your informational interviews and you go on actual interviews and the politics and everything behind it and I would see people doing things I'm like I can do that and I know that I could probably do it even better. Why is this person, you know, better than me? But I, you know, when it came to that, I kind of doubted myself and so I was like, you know what, forget it. People like me, my personality, I'm just mm -hmm. doing it myself. Mm -hmm. And it worked. Mm -hmm. And that's and how I started my On My Mind series and it just took off from there and the best decision I made. Yeah, well, we're gonna talk about On My Mind and what was going on at that time. But let's go back to an earlier time um, when Chani K was a kiddo. <laughs> um, mom migrated. Yes. Migrated. You were here with dad for a little bit. Yes. And then you ended up with? Ended up back with, with mom. Yes. After a little while. You were with grandma for a bit too. Oh yeah. Oh, everybody was with grandma for yeah. a little bit. <laughs> I think that is not a staple <laughs> in, in every Jamaican kid's life to be with grandma. Yeah, I was a girl. She beat me a say? She beat too? What? Well, you, you but you weren't a bad kiddo. You know, I wasn't bad, but I think my ears did odd. Yeah. So I think because of that, I was spanking, you know, here and there. <laughs> but look at me now. It worked. But growing up with grandma instilled a lot of things, I must say. Um, she covers me daily with prayer from ever since I can remember. And even if I forget to pray, 
I know my grandma's got me with prayer. She's got me with food. She's got me with the pudding pie, mm. the potato pudding mm -hmm. pie to be exact. Mm -hmm. And but she I do with church. Yeah, man, Don't church. Play. Yes, and on Mr. Ruddy bike back in Woodland in um <laughs> in St. Thomas at Woodburn. So that was a daily staple, like Friday evening when the sun sets, that's the time the Sabbath begins. And so, you know, we'd pray every single night in a living room and sing, and then we go to church on Saturday, which was the best thing ever. Yeah. at that time because you know you get to mingle with your friends and you know you get trouble under the quiet and get pinched when you're sitting on the bench and you know just coming home and the food after church and then sunday and then it was great you were baptized yes i know many would <laughs> not believe that but i was baptized when i when i was younger so i it was just a thing to do i don't think i fully understand what it meant i just knew it was what everybody was doing and i was like all right <laughs> i want to do it too and then I remember when I baptized, I th thought that when you were baptized, you wouldn't be able to have bad thoughts or even think of curse words or stuff like that. But I was wrong. <laughs> I still thought about I, I I think I purposely thought about like, about like the F word, like after I got baptized, just to see if like I was going to think about it. Because they made it seem like once you're baptized, you're pure, you're holy and certain bad things you'll forget. But I think that's when the challenge really starts. Mm -hmm. Can you maintain being a good person? Can you maintain living a life on the straight and narrow. And, you know, I tried, but I was young, Sims. Yeah. I was young, you know what I mean? But, you know, I still live a, a great life. Yeah, and you still have a relationship with God. Yes, yeah. I do. I do have my personal relationship with God. I don't really believe that you need to be in a physical church to be able to have a relationship with God and to be able to, to pray and tell him everything that you're going through. I have not personally found a church currently that... I feel that same feeling I got when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if I could find a church that gives me that feeling when I was going to church with my grandma, my family members, sign me up. But it's seven day business though. You, you yeah. go back into the seventh day because that's stricter than, I mean, as far as I see it, oh. a more strict than the regular. Oh, it is. I think so. Yeah. Am I right? Maybe Am things right? have changed. I'm not quite sure. If it's too it strict. It has in some. Really? Well, if, it's if, it's too, say if it's too strict. Yeah, if it's too strict, I'll just, <laughs> just, just me and you, God, in my room. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay, okay. So we've established a bit of a, a foundation to tell you where she's coming from. Um, some of the things she went through in prep school here, in school here, and then what happened when she left Jamaica uh, as a young girl and compared what she was going through here to what she was going through there. More with Carrie Ann after this. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We're back with Carrie Ann. You know her as Chiny K, talking to her a little bit about her her own life and where she is now and how she got here. Um, in school, they bullied you? Yeah, a lot. In school here? Both. Both. When I was in school in Jamaica, I went to Wilmer's Girls for a little bit. Um, I'll just tell you what they call me. During that time, I was, <laughs> I was known as a, a Bigfoot <laughs> uh, captain. <laughs> yeah. Captain? Yeah, can you know the bread bigs in my <laughs> So Captain's Red Foot, um, Big Bird, Big Red. Big uh, everything, just big? Big everything. Yeah, because I was, I was very tall and lanky and yellow, as you would say, like in Jamaica. So that was the only thing that pretty much that I, was, I was bullied for. Yeah. It affected me, but... You didn't have a lot of friends when you were in school. Not really, not really in Jamaica because I was like back and forth with the U.S. and Jamaica. So I never really had a chance to build like solid, solid mm -hmm. friendships. Only a few, but more in the States than in Jamaica. In by Jamaica, the time you got to the States and you got to school there, it was harder there to make friends because, because when you landed where you landed, yeah. people already had formed their friendships. So yeah, it was like you were on the outside. Right, I was on the outside. Because most, most friendships start from, like, say, you know, basic school or elementary school all the way up. Because when, once you're in that district, when I started, I started at Freeland Heights and Middle School. It was in uh, New Jersey. And, again, I just jumped in, and I really didn't have that many friends. And also, once you land in the States, you're in a category. Now I'm black. I'm African-American now. Before, I didn't know that there had to be 
specific groups of friendships. And I didn't know that you have the emo kids one way, you have the, you know, the white girls with the blonde hair, blue eyes, then you got the valley girls, then you have the, the, the students that smoked, then you had the outcasts, you had the kids that were in the carpet room, you had the immigrants, wow. you had the ones that really, once you don't speak proper English, even if you are Jamaican, but you have an accent, they just can't be bothered. They just deem you, your English is not great. So they put you in a carpet class, which was the class with, you know, other students that didn't speak English. Because the they couldn't, yeah, because the, the room was carpet for, for, those, <laughs> for those students other than, the rest of the, other than the rest of the class. So for me, it was, it was very difficult at that time because all of a sudden, mm -hmm. I knew the N-word. I knew that there was colorism, colorism and classism, and I didn't know none of that existed in Jamaica. Yeah, you can call him a big bird or whatever, but it didn't get me down or anything. Like, I, I knew my feet was big. I know I was big and tall. Like, I accepted that. It was cool, but in America, it's on a different level. Mm -hmm. It's definitely on How a you different manage level. Because at this point now, you're at a place where you're trying to find yourself. You're building yes. self-identity and self-worth and self-value. Yes. How did you navigate? I mean, Benz was there. Your mom was there. Yes. Um, were you able to talk to her about that? How did you, how did you navigate that? Um, I don't think I, I spoke to her much about things that were going on. I did tell her about my mustache at that time. And I said, Ma, because I ended up being there at the time where, <laughs> you know, I was going through puberty. So, you know, you have a lot of emotions going into, you know, your teenage years. You start developing certain ways and you start getting hair in different places. And because I was, you know, when I said I'm light skin, mm -hmm. you know, your mustache start growing, gets a little shadow. And I said, Ma, they're bullying me about, like, my mustache. And she's like, Carrie, don't worry about it. Leave it. But I didn't listen. I shaved it. Yeah. And look at me today. It's, 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 you can't even see it. I'm so, I'm so happy I did that. But I think my mom probably was going through things of her own. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't even bother her with that. I kind of just dealt with it on my own. So it's, yeah, just pretty much dealt with it on my own or, you know, speak to, you know, whichever friends that I would meet or our associates like that. And it worked. Yeah. But you, you kind of remained a loner. Some sense, Pretty yes, much. but yeah. I try to, this would be during middle school and high school sometimes, right, in the beginning mostly. I became a loner and I mostly befriended like the Latinas and like, you know, the black kids and, you know, I had a few because white friends. The other, all of you who were the yeah, other. Yeah, because it was a, we grew up in a, in a white neighborhood, so there was very many, you know, black people or, you know, Spanish people, so you just automatically went to that. And because I was tall, and where the principal was like, you're so tall, you should do basketball. And I was like, all right, I couldn't keep up, Simone. <laughs> I'm fit, but not that really fit. I couldn't keep up. I remember I lied and I said, you know what? My period came and I just, and I just sat in a bathroom and hid because it was too much back and forth yeah. with the running and thing. And I just, I just couldn't be bothered. So I did try the, you know, the socializing type thing. But for the most part, sometimes I, stayed alone. But, but you say even no, Carrie Ann, you're not really, yes, people see you out there, but you prefer to be, you're not really a socialite. I am in a sense, but I do like my moments. Mm -hmm. I am like the, the China K that you guys see online, that's me through and through. But I do have my moments where I like my quiet time. So sometimes maybe you would see me out alone. I'm having a glass of wine and a nice meal. I just got so much going on that I cherish those moments with myself. I don't do it as much in Jamaica, but in the States, I don't mind taking myself to dinner, going to the movies by myself. I like that. It gives me a chance to, to just center myself yeah. and just, you know, hone in and just be at peace. I don't mind going to a resort by myself. Like, I, I need that for me Recharge. sometimes. Yes. Especially you know as a mother. Of course. Okay. Um, you, you, you've been working since you were 15 years old. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You know how to make ice cream. Yes. I'm curious, some of that ice cream store on the other side and how this girl has been through some things in, the, in her work life, um, but everything has built her to where she is today. We have more with Carrie Ann on the other side. So come. Back with Carrie Ann, everybody, who has been working since the age of 15, actually worked at an ice cream shop. Yes. Um, in the States for many more years. More than 10 years. <laughs> than you say you ought to have until you got 
fired. ceremoniously <laughs> fired, which you say is one of the best things that could have happened to you. We're going to talk mm. about that. Yes. But the work thing was tough, lady. Working and going through school. And, yes. Um, you were with your mom. Your mom relocated. Yes. You were going to move in with your sister. Your sister moved away. Yes. It was just you. It was just me. So working since I was 15, it was a thing to do, Simone. It was the thing to do in America. If you know, you know. And also during high school, it was cool to have a job because you want that, you want that independence. So you want to have like, you know, your own money. And you know, in foreign, as we all say, it's not a bed of roses and nobody does nothing for you, Simone. And so it's always nice to have your money. And sometimes parents, you know, tell their kids like, oh, you're work. No, you know, I need money for the rent. I need money for lights. I need money for this. Um, so that was a challenge, but I kept that job for a very long time. That was like my main job. But at one point I was working like three, four jobs. I was working at Bath and Body Works during the seasons and sometimes even longer. I was uh, working at the mall as well. I was, you know, doing um, opinions, which was creating like content for a company that showed you movie, mm -hmm. you know, movie trailers and I would get their opinions on it before it officially dropped. So I was, I was doing a lot at that time while navigating my mom wanting to relocate to a different state, to buy a house in a different state, while trying to maintain college. I, it, it was a lot. So I had that job since I was 15 from high school straight through college mm -hmm. until I ultimately got um, fired. Yes. Do I tell them how I got fired? You can, you can absolutely do that. So I've never told anyone. <laughs> I've never told anyone, but I remember it was in March on a a cold spring semester and at the time I was talking to somebody in college and he dormed on campus I went to William Patterson University and we were laying down it was warm it was cozy <laughs> now if you know anything when you know it's cold outside and you know this whole seasons thing it's cuddle weather Simone yeah. yeah you know what I mean and I was like you know what I don't feel like you know you I had a go six to, yeah it was a 6 to 11 shift and I was like I don't want to go to work today and I thought of what can I lie about so I don't make it to work. And so at the time I was suffering from migraines, didn't know why or what was causing it, but it was bad. So my job was familiar with that. So I called and I said, hey, you know, I'm having a migraine, so I don't think I'll be able to make it in. Actually, I didn't even call. I tried to make it seem like an emergency and we laid up in bed, we cuddled, we, you know, did whatever. And I was like, oh, I need an excuse. So I went to the hospital, Simone, Got an injection yeah. in the side right here. For no pain. For no pain. Mm -hmm. That injection cost me $500. And your job. <laughs> and my it job. cost me much more than $500. $500. There's a lesson in here somewhere. I'm going to tell you the lesson. <laughs> yes. And the lesson is, I think that was the best thing that ever happened, even though it was the most scary thing mm. that ever happened, because I have a problem with moving on and letting go in a you sense. Love routine. Right. Because yes. I, I know a routine. I go yes. to college. That was a routine. Yes. Yes. And even when I left college, I was still going back to campus because that's what I knew. I didn't know what I was doing next. And in having a job, I didn't even tell Benz that I got fired. She was always saying, I left from up, I miss a fine. I'm going to find something to do with yourself. And, you know, Ray, Ray, Ray. But I slowly figured it out after mm -hmm. that, after being just a wreck. I, I had that job for more than 10 years. So imagine now getting fired, what am Where's I going to do? Where's your money gonna come from? Where's my money gonna and come so, from? And so you ended up, living, living situation got bad after that. Yeah. You ended up in basements. Yes. Up in attics. Yes, it was, oh, basement to attic, yes. Yeah, so I, when, when mom left, I said to my sister like, hey, as sisters now, mom want to go to, to South Carolina. I didn't want to go. I was like, it's slow. In my head, I need to be in New York or LA based on the field that I was studying in college. I kind of had a plan, but no money. And so I said to my sister, like, hey, you know, what do you think about, you know, we get a place and we stay here in New Jersey. And she didn't really answer me. I thought like, okay, she was thinking about it. That's the plan. Until she comes back and she's like, I'm moving to Costa Rica. And I was like, what do you mean you're moving to Costa Rica? We just had a whole plan, I thought, in my head. So I had to figure it out. So even though I left Denville Dairy, I was still doing Bath and Body Works and a secretary job trying to figure it out. And I found a, a place in a basement, in a house. And if you know, you know New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, the whole tri-state rent and buying a house is so expensive in those states. And I was able to find 
a basement in a house, a shared house. I think there were like maybe like three or four other people living there. So it was, I got the basement. It was a shared bathroom and shared kitchen. And when I got to that basement. Shared nicotine, smoke. Yes. And soot. That basement what is supposed to be white, but it was covered in soot. I'm talking wall, floor to ceiling. I had one bed that Ben's had in a living room because at the time we were in a one bedroom apartment and it was one bed and you can pull it out and bring it, bring out the mattress to make like a bigger bed. And that was the only clean thing that I had that I felt safe in. And my friend uh, Trackstar and I, when I would wipe, it was so bad. And I remember Ben's coming to visit because at the time moving, I was in charge of her plants. I was like, mom, I got the plants. I was so embarrassed to have her visit, but she did. And she sat on a bed and she just looked like this, mm -hmm. but she didn't say a word. She didn't judge me. She didn't say anything about where I was, but I know my mom, she's super emotional. So she probably went and cried about it like on her own or something. Cause half the things she's been through, she hasn't told us. Cause she was like, Carrie, if I tell another half, I want her tears to cry and this and that. She hasn't said anything. I know a little, but I feel like sometimes her parents, they don't tell us half. To protect us. To protect us of what they, you know, been through. And she didn't say anything. But I stayed in that basement for a bit, and then I came up with a plan. Yeah, let's talk about the plan on the other side. Um, yeah, soon come. All right, we're back with you. You're about to tell us about the plan. Um, but even while you're devising the plan and you're working, you said there were times, Kerry, where things were so bad, you were literally stealing lunches at yeah. work yeah. to eat. Yes. That was during that time when I was living in the basement. I would buy, I'd probably buy like meal prep, i buy like spaghetti, and I would make that, and I would have it for a couple of days. But there'd be times that I could only afford like $2 chicken pot pies from Walmart, the Stouffer's one or the lasagna one. But I ate it so much that now I don't even like it, mm. but that's what I had to do. And sometimes if I didn't have it, I would just take my coworkers lunch because they would have also like the frozen meals. And I didn't know whose it was. It didn't have any name or anything on it. Maybe I saw it yesterday, but it wasn't eaten when it was there today. And so I would just eat it and uh, warm it up and mm. eat it for myself. It got to that point. And mind you, this was probably after coming to Jamaica and doing all this and Chinese K and da da da. Mm -hmm. And when I went back, it was a whole different story. Which is the thing that always makes me tell people, don't, don't believe everything you see on social. Because at this point now you've gone, you figured out, uh, you have an epiphany and say, oh boy, communications looks like a great thing. You had done a gig in, in um, Jersey on a yeah. radio station. Yeah. And you said, oh my God, this is a thing. Yeah. You went and you studied it. Yeah. And you got your camera and you start eating and you come home, you're doing On My Mind and, you know, Chani K's star is rising and you go home and nothing now go on for you. Yeah. Because at the time I was doing it for the love of it. For the love. For the love of it. I genuinely love creating content you know, reaching out to people, making people laugh. And I know the ideas that I could bring in this space. So it was my passion. And I met somebody later on and he was like, I can't understand why you're doing this for free and you're not making any money. Now I'm talking about shooting, hosting, editing. I was basically doing everything, but I loved every minute of it, Simone. I just loved it. And so even now when people ask me, oh, I want to be a YouTuber, I want to be a content creator. It doesn't work that way. You have to have the passion for it. But now it's like a thing. You know, people want to do it because you see people, you know, you deem as your influencer making so much money, but you got to have the love for it. It's the, the passion to do it. So you realized you had the passion. You, you, start, you were collaborating, working with Tanania, doing stuff with Dan. Mm -hmm. You realize it's, it's really working. Mm -hmm. um, and so you come home to try and, 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 and make a thing of it. And in social, some people are loving you, but there's also a lot of, who is this girl? Right. Why does she talk like that? Right. <laughs> She's annoying. <laughs> How do you navigate now that some love on this side, but a lot of... Yeah. Well, before I was very established on my On My Mind series, I'm super, super proud of it. It got to the point where I started getting paid for doing it. And I was like, I could get paid for doing what I love. It got to that point. So 
I started to know like, okay, there is a space for me, but I wasn't known in Jamaica as much as I was known overseas. That's where I lived, that's where my base, so the diaspora knew me more than Jamaicans in Jamaica. So I was always back and forth sometimes when I could, and being in Jamaica now um, for you know a longer period, I had met Dan in about 2016, 2017 when I was covering something in the grill. And I was like, oh, you know, haha, -ha, funny kind of guy. And like, we kind of ish, you know, kept in touch, but you know, we had our own lives. And then moving forward now, being in Jamaica a little bit more, um, you know, we started creating content because he's, he's great. He has a lot of ideas. He's very smart in the, in the creative field. So we started doing things. And then on came like basically everybody else when it came to creating content. So once people in the space started seeing all of us, everybody else had their, their following in Jamaica. But it was like, who is this girl, like you said? Why does she talk like that? Where she come from? You know, so I kind of got a lot of slack for that until eventually people started liking me. But it was, it was a weird space to be in because I was never somebody that's been associated, like, in a group, so to speak, mm -hmm. or, you know, associated with others because I've always done everything on my own. And it played on your esteem. And, you know, you'd say even when you were working with the collaborators, you felt it was about them and less about you. You were kind of riding on Dan's coattails because he was a creative, he was a this, he was a that. Until one day, Dan, I had to say to you, hello! <laughs> and he probably said it exactly. Like, he was like, what is wrong with you? Do um, you not see your talent? <laughs> well, I would say riding on his, his coattail. I just thought that he, well, it was evident that he was the brains behind everything. That's what you told because, me you yeah, felt like you were yeah, doing, felt he, like you were riding on right? Yeah, he was, he is that creative. Mm -hmm. And prior to me knowing him, he's always been in the creative space, whether it's theater, whether it's acting, whether it's producing. So he's always been in that space. However, I just felt like because I was new to this space that I was getting a lot of slack because not a, peop not a lot of people knew me. I just felt like I didn't totally fit in. Mm -hmm. And when he said that was, you know, when I had doubts about uh, winning Social House, about whether or not I was going to win because I didn't, I didn't believe I was that girl at the time, sometimes. And then what happened? I'm that girl. <laughs> I won. Oh, I won. won because won. I think sometimes I doubt myself a little bit, but people see sometimes things that sometimes I don't see in myself sometimes. Yes. I've um, become a lot more confident in a lot of things. Um, social House, I had a plan yeah. going into that show. I, I wanted all my friends to be in it. Everybody that you see me associated with on the internet, I wanted all of them to be a part of that show. But it didn't work out, mm -hmm. but I won. Yes, yes. I won. She won, and she keeps winning, um, especially with those who love and support her. Run it goes. Laura, let's go. Good vibes time. Kudos to China K, one of the most natural finds in Jamaican television. Girl, you're doing well. Continue on that path. Bless her. Let me just say, I am so proud of you, Auntie Kerry, in everything that you do. Auntie Kerry is such a loving person. It just seems like she'll have all of it inside of her, ready to just give. I'm look up to Auntie Carrie from my baby. She's such a good friend, sister, a good mother. Love you so much, Auntie Carrie. Love you so much. Hey, girl. Hey, Carrie, aka Chani K. Oh my goodness, look at you doing big things. Uh, it seems like it was just yesterday that we were both youngins growing up in small town Rockaway, New Jersey. You know, I always remember the high school talent show that we did to Sean Paul get busy. <laughs> Girl, you know, they done about kicked us off that stage, but you know, at least we look cute. <laughs> uh, no, but for real, I know we have stories that we can talk about for days, but you know, the most memorable stories that I remember is you being there for me when I had my first son, your godson, Jaden, um, to me waitressing, to you working at Denville Dairy. Um, now fast forward to today, 
I just want to say how proud I am of you, how happy I am for you, for becoming a successful black woman, um, for achieving all your goals and your dreams. I love you and I wish you continued blessings and success in your life. All I can say right now is wow. I'm so proud of you on all the success you've received. Everything that you told me you were gonna do, you put your mind to it and you did. And, and you've always had that drive about you. Now, from being a mother to, to being a successful businesswoman with your hair products, man, I'm, I'm so proud of you and I love you. And I thank you for being such a great influence in my life. And I know you influence so many more people. So I just wanted to give you your flowers, tell you I'm proud of you, tell you I love you so much more. I can't wait to see what's next for you. Easily, easily one of my best friends in the world. Easy to describe because you're humble, you're beautiful, you are an amazing mother to pumpkin pie. And I've watched you grow from On My Mind series to being social media influence of the year, to having your own brand, Jolie Fair, to being a brand, China K. You know, and sometimes I saw you doubt yourself, but you got through it. And I just want to tell you, don't ever doubt yourself, girl. You are an amazing person. You are such a reliable friend. You're resilient, and I don't want you to ever change. All the blessings that God is blessing you with, receive it, because you deserve it. All right? Mwah. I just want to say congratulations. I want to say that I'm proud of you, that I love you. Um, that you have come such a far away. I've seen you grow and I've seen you transform in this phenomenal woman, queen that you are. And you deserve nothing but the best. Um, thank you for being an inspiration. Thank you for motivating others. Thank you for loving who you are and pushing all the boundaries and never stop um, doing your best for yourself and your daughter or your family and friends around you. Thank you for loving us the way you do. Thank you for the best version of yourself. As the Lord continue to bless you and keep you, I know that you will do wonderful things. Your journey doesn't stop here. I just want to say that I'm proud of you and that I love you. I just wanted to say how proud I am of you. You're easily one of the hardest working people that I know. As an influencer, as an entrepreneur, as a media personality, as a mother and as a friend your drive your work ethic your go-getter spirit is unmatched and it inspires me on a daily you've accomplished so much and i believe you can accomplish anything you set your mind to you're stronger than you give yourself credit for so i just want to say care bear keep going you got this. I'm looking forward to so much more greatness from you. All right? Love, Mama. Hi, Carrie. I just want to let you know how absolutely proud I am of you. I am grateful to call you my friend. I'm absolutely grateful to have you in my life. And you are such a wonderful person. From the very first time I met you, I knew that you were a force to be reckoned with and that the world was going to see this beautiful, talented person and you have just blossomed you have grown you have glowed you have cried you have done it all and there's more to come and i just want to let you know that you should continue to be the great person that you are on and off the camera you're just beautiful the aura that you exude fantastic and I'm grateful that you have trusted me for so many years as your makeup artist and as your friend. And I'm grateful and appreciative of you and I absolutely love you. Hi Auntie Kerry, we just wanted to let you know that we are so proud of you, so proud of all your achievements and so proud of how far that you've come. We just want to let you know to keep going with all your success because we are so proud of you. So, so proud of you indeed. Just want to let you know. We're proud of you to the max. Can't believe you're in this moment, but here you are, girl, you worked hard. Um, you've done amazing. You have always been uh, determined. You've always been a driver. You have always like a get goer from, you know, from young. And I just want to let you know that we are so, so proud of you. We love you to the max. Girl, we got your back, no matter what. Um, and we're there for you. Love you. Love you. Continue 
doing your best and continue to fail forward. I think Michelle Obama says that. Fail forward, because through every failure, you learn, you grow, and then you do better for the next time you do something. We love you, we're proud of you. And let me see if baby girl can say something. Hi, mama. Mama. <laughs> She's just eating. But bye-bye, we love you. I just want to publicly tell you how much I love you and how proud I am of you and all that you have achieved so far. And although, as Bojo said, it's not an easy road, yet you have kept your eyes on your prize as you strive towards achieving your goals. But on your journey, don't ever forget your roots and those who have been their prayers on a daily basis, as you are never alone along your journey. Blessings. Hi, Carrie Ann. This is your mom. I love you. Congratulations on your success. I wish you all the best and continue to do your best. Okay, darling, I love you. Carrie, get up on a swim stool. Hey, <laughs> girl. <laughs> what are you doing, baby? I am here. And I just want to say to you that you are loved. You know what I mean? From a meteor. I'm a meter when we are friends. I want to look a video of them. You know, look at Chance, so, you know what I mean? Truly talented. You know, you never really take directions well, but you know, it was very hard to direct. But, you know, besides that, talented. Um, and then, you know, became, we became more than friends to you know we're, we're a family. Um, and and I, I must say that at some time, yeah, I said to myself, I want to carry the school for this because. You, you have it, you have it luck. You have it luck. Uh, you know, the, me don't know, like, the mother thing, you have it down. Me are learning. <laughs> I'm a I'm glad to have you as a support. And I'm also want to say to you that you are immensely loved. Um, continue to be great. Continue to do great things. Um, and yeah, in a couple of years, we can have the next one. No, no, not force me, not force me. I'd miss it, nobody, I'm not bad. 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 Monday from as you tell the story, Dan, she told me that you were trying earlier on, but she um she wasn't really interested initially. I wasn't. Oh. <laughs> Oh, what happened? <laughs> what happened? Girl, get your popcorn. What happened? Okay. Oh, it's on like a pot. So, <laughs> this was maybe like 20, maybe like 2016, 2017. I was shooting On My Mind, covering an event uh, in the grill. And you know, I'm interviewing people. And he came up for it. Actually, he came up and started um, whining on my leg. He started whining on my leg, on this leg. <laughs> and I, so then I was like, what is going on? But you know, we're at a party or whatever. So I thought, you know, he's so funny. But he's trying to look me at the time. But, you know, you're at a party. Everybody I try to look something. And to this day, if you ask him about a sharp broad man, he'll tell you about a sharp broad man because he said, I went with the sharp broad man instead. <laughs> well, it all worked out. <laughs> look at that. As you said, you're a family. You understand what I'm saying? Now. Yes. Um, we're going to talk more about motherhood on the other side of this. But there is somebody else who wanted to send you uh, a message. Um, Lori, go ahead and run that, please. Hey girly, so I wanted to give you actual flowers, not give you your flowers through a video. We're on FaceTime all the time and we talk so much positivity, but I want you to know that there's people out there that loves you so much like myself, who will go above and beyond to make sure you have a set of flowers to put a smile on your face. You have been such an amazing human being, full of just joy, laughter, through the ups, through the downs. You persevere, you're a mom, you're a strong, strong woman. You are just the epitome of a great woman. And I just want to give you flowers. I hope this put a smile on your face. I want you to know that you are loved, you are appreciated, and continue to keep thriving through life and going. And of course, keep God first. Mwah. She wanted you to know she wanted to give you your real, real flowers. This is nice. She knows I like roses. Yes. I'm so, so proud of her, too. She's she recently made a transition to fully being a Christian, but she always kept God first. Always, always, always. Even if you see our wind up and think God, like nobody could say that she's changed because God has always been 
the forefront of her journey. Mm -hmm. And she just got a little bit closer. So I'm so, so proud of her. And we've been through so much from like 2016, 2017. That's my girl. Yeah. I really, really appreciate this. Thank you. All right, <laughs> take a break. Wrap it up with Carrie on the other side. Tsung Kong. Welcome back, everybody. We are leading our show with Carrie Ann. We were talking on the phone. You said sometimes you can't like know when you go to buy what you want to buy or eat what you want to eat. It dawns on you that there was a time when you couldn't choose. Yeah. And you look at your journey and you think, what? I think I did it. When I look back and I see that doubtful girl that's always wondering what's next just trying to figure it out and navigate the space. When I look back at her, I just feel so pressured to do something with, you know, like my career and stuff. And hopefully, you know, finding like something in my field, like a job or something. It brings tears to my eyes, honestly. I just want to hug her and say, girl, we did it. Why are you sitting here crying? Or what were you worrying about? We did it. I feel like I want to sit and have a conversation with her, motivate her, mm -hmm. take her out, let her know that it's going to be okay as long as you focus on yourself mm -hmm. and the people that matter and move forward. Yeah. Even if you stumble a little bit, still move forward because you have an idea. You know exactly what you want. You'll make it. I wish I could tell that girl at that time. And I would love for you to tell other girls and yes. guys who are watching because a lot of people feel that. And they think, well, I'll never get out of this. But I always tell people, one day you'll be at a point where you look back and say, oh, I did it. I know. Yeah. And it's so rewarding. It's so rewarding. I would say document everything because it gives you a chance to realize that you've come from something. And even the, even the smallest you know, improvement that you've made or the smallest progress, it's it makes sense. And I think now with social media, it's a little bit harder and it's only going to get harder for our kids and our kids' kids as it goes along because now you get to, you're seeing things on social media and you feel rushed. And that was how I felt when I was in college. I felt rushed, like I need to be doing this. This is where I need to be and I'm not there. And that's one of the things that made me doubtful. That was the sole reason that made me feel doubtful. To, I just felt like I wasn't where I want to be just yet because so-and-so is already there. But when you take your time, you focus on yourself and bet on yourself. When I say bet on yourself, I mean it. Load of renting. You don't need to be in a group to be that it girl or be in a group to feel like, you know, you want to be a part of or you want to be known. Bet on yourself. You are good enough. Even if you don't believe it, believe me, mm -hmm. you are good Enough. Because it's going. when you bet on yourself that you that you won. That's it. When I bet on myself, that's when I won. I don't want to leave without us talking about how motherhood has changed you. What is pumpkin raising pumpkin pie like? Oh my God, she is. She's so amazing. Motherhood definitely changed me for the best. It's something that I've wanted for a while, but always wondered: Can I afford to? Or when is the right time? Especially as women in business, we tend to put off having a family. We see a lot of our favorite celebs having kids. So later on, Ashanti, Nicki Minaj, Serena Williams, you know, they're all having kids like after they've been successful. But I know you can do it. You can do it all. And she's changed me for the best. It's motivated me. She is so amazing. She's starting to talk now and know. So she sees me on the phone. She says, hi, pumpkin pie. Oh, no. Yeah, because that's what, you know, that's what I call her. So she, she relate to that. It's oh, being a mom motivates me on a whole different level. Yeah. I thought I was motivated before. I'm motivated on a whole different level. Because you just say you want to live for her now and see her past her worst and give her all the best. I don't want a single sad tear to fall from her eyes. I want to, that's my biggest fear is not being around for everything. At least I want to be around to, to know that she's good. I want to be here for every single moment. I want to be there to wipe her tears. I want to make sure she is successful in everything that she does. I want to be there to help her, motivate her, push her. Anything that she wants, Simone, is hers. And it doesn't have to be material things. 
anything, I will go out of my way and I will make that sacrifice to make sure she has every single thing. And I will make sure that she is protected at all costs. You're not gonna force me or rush me. She's gonna be protected at what? All costs. All costs. Felt, felt, thank you. Thank you. For sitting with me. Thank you. For sharing your story. Um, every parent just felt that. Believe <laughs> me. Yes. I felt it. <laughs> um, uh, you are a, you are a, you are an inspiration to a Thank lot of you. folks, and and well before, but will be so much more after this because people know so much more now. And I wish you all. I don't ever wish you because I know you're going to even greater heights. But all the best on your journey. Thank you. Uh, with your job, with your life, with your family. Yes. Every blessing be yours. Thank you. I uh, appreciate it. All right, Thank guys. So now it's time for affirmation. <laughs> All right, so to believe or not to believe in yourself, that is a question. A question for which many of us have no answer or for whom too many of us the answer is no. But if you can't take a risk on yourself, trust yourself to come through for you, then why should anybody else? And yes, it's scary, but no risk, no reward. We don't have to go too hard, you know, we can take our time, but we're definitely not going home. So listen, that thing you've been wanting to do, that situation that you're afraid to go through, that thing you want to experience as brand new, stop imagining and do. For if not you, then who? You don't have to be a gambler to place this bet. And betting on you may be the best bet you've placed yet. So tonight, we are affirming, I am betting on me because I know I am a winner and that is our soul food and our show for this evening thank you very much for watching we are back next week with another story of the power of the human spirit until then every blessing and please remember to count your blessings